We are a nation of jet setters. Close to 60 million travellers boarded a domestic flight last year, and 30 million flew abroad. But our love of flying means that planes and wildlife are competing for space in the sky, and that is cause for concern. Because wildlife strikes cause severe damage to aircraft, they cause ongoing costs to airline industries, and it's something that is avoidable. Absolutely, they're seeing an increase in the number of strikes and the increased rate of strikes. There's about 2,000 reported strikes in Australia per year, which is the highest of any sort of incident in aviation in, in Australia. Wildlife strikes, or collisions between a bird or animal and an aircraft, rarely cause harm to crew or passengers on commercial flights, but they do damage planes. It costs the civil aviation industry about $1.5 billion per annum, and that's not just the damage cost, but also the knock-on effects of delays. Fingers crossed we don't hit any birds today. But with a national average of four strikes daily and over 1,700 collisions recorded this year already, it is relatively common and the risk is real. Strikes happen most often during takeoff and landing. That's why management of wildlife in and around airports is vital. It's really important to know what bird species it is because different birds present different hazards to aircraft. Then we can focus on species that are causing problems and have management strategies in place to help reduce that sort of issue. Mitigating the risk means knowing which species is being hit. But finding out is not always straightforward. So, Martin, this looks like a bird strike. That's right. You can see around the cowling here all of the debris that's been left by when the bird's impacted with the aircraft. Obviously, we don't have a full carcass here to work with, but we've got enough remains that have smeared onto the cowling here that we can take a good sample. It's kind of like the whodunit of a crime scene. All we're left with is blood and debris, so we can send that to a DNA laboratory and get the information we need. This detective work is the domain of Dr Rebecca Johnson, who heads up the Centre for Wildlife Genomics at the Australian Museum. We get quite a few samples through every week, which is actually only a fraction of the strikes that happen every day in Australia. We're looking at genes that are informative at a species level. They inform how they're related to other animals. So that's actually part of our core science that we do here at the museum. And identifying unknown animals fits in really well with that. In addition to its genomics capabilities, the Australian Museum has access to another unique resource. We have an incredible collection here. So we have a lot of animals, 18 million specimens, in fact. And in our group, which is the genetics group, we have about 100,000 tissue samples taken from those animals. And we use DNA that we extract from those known reference materials to identify an unknown sample that's brought into the laboratory. Rebecca shows me one such case. They start by sequencing the sample DNA. So once you've got that, then you can compare that to a catalogue? Yes, that's correct. And then we conduct a series of calculations that see how related it is to other species on our database and hopefully come up with the species level match. And so 100% of the time, yep. it fits into this group of species here, which is a single species, Ardia novae hollandiae. So what's that and commonly that's known a as? a white-faced heron. Right, okay. So that's um, a fairly big... Quite a big bird. Big bird that mm. you... Wouldn't want to run into. notice if you ran into that. <laughs> But identifying the species is just the first step. Gold Coast Airport runs a 24-7 operation to keep the airspace and runways clear of animals. With dispersal, we get out on the airfield with a, a number of different devices. The gun is one technique that we have that allows us to use pyrotechnics. They can project a, a very loud noise quite a long distance and it's a, a really effective tool for use against birds, but it doesn't harm them. But Gold Coast Airport has another unique approach to combat the problem. Australia's first purpose-trained bird strike dog. Wait. We brought Joe, the wonder dog, onto the team and he's fantastic. Okay, Joe. Yep. Yep. 
Joe essentially adds a predatory influence to the program. So the bird population see Joe as simply a, a predator, like a, like a fox or something like that. And so the birds are, are wary in that area and they'll move away from it. Here's another tool in my kit of dispersal tools when it comes to moving birds off the airport. Hey, good boy, Joe. Good boy. Joe is trained not to harm the birds, but to disperse them. And while he seems to love his job, he also gets results. Following his introduction at the airport here, we had a look at some of the statistics. The data is pretty clear. You, know, you can see that the types of birds that he would be influencing, their numbers of, of strikes have, have decreased as well. So why do you use so many different techniques? It's to stop habituation. We've got lots of different sorts of birds and you don't want those birds getting used to any one type of tool. So you need to constantly mix it up. Winter as well is impacting on how much the grass is growing. Yeah, but, um, In addition to scaring birds away, the grass is left long to reduce certain species. Specialised drains deter ducks and other water birds. But the management strategies aren't limited to the airport grounds. Just outside the airport, field officer Cameron Wheatman manages one of the most dangerous species, the Australian white ibis. 22% of all Australian white ibis strikes cause damage in Australia. So that can be fairly minor or it can be significant and it can be the inclusion of, of damaging an entire engine. In 1997, the ibis population reached over 5,000, presenting a serious threat to planes taking off nearby. A management plan was put in place. The program involves removing some of the nests and eggs. Yeah, I can see eggs. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep, we've got two to three. Yeah, we've got three. That usually means we've got a lot of food source around and they're able to breed. The program successfully reduced the population by 60%. Almost there. There it comes. We are part of a growing community of people who work at airports all around the world who are working at mitigating wildlife strikes with aircraft. I think we've been getting better at it and understanding the issue more. And we're moving now into new technologies that are taking the fight against birds, I guess, out of the airports and into the skies where we can help to actually have aircraft and birds avoiding each other. So hopefully that's more of the future. 